Recognized, Emily of Arden, D. 1, 2. Recognized, Nathan Schultz, D. 6, 0. Hello team. Today in the Watchtower, we welcome Nathan Schultz. Nathan is a longtime comic book fan, even going so far as to write and self-publish three issues of his own comic book known as The Shrouded City. But outside of that, you may be more likely to recognize his voice from In Quest of Geek, where he acts as one of the co-hosts of their Tavern Team series. We've had a few of the other hosts on as guests in the past, but for those who may not remember, In Quest of Geek is a pop culture discussion podcast and Twitch stream that dives deep into your favorite films, TV series, and so much more. Nathan, I am so happy to welcome you to Wound. Oh man, glad to be here. Uh, is it? It's very crash to be here. Yes, am I using the yes slang correctly? <laughs> there you go. He says sounding like he didn't cool just kids. wiki all of that. I did watch the series. I swear to God. It's it's fine. <laughs> Not a we. <laughs> We've made over 200 episodes about this show. We do not expect everyone to remember everything, man. <laughs> it's a lot. It's three seasons worth. Before we begin, I want to remind everyone listening at home that our discussion episodes draw on anything and everything related to Young Justice, including all three seasons so far, the comics, the video game, and even the audio play. So if you have not seen, read, or played all of the material and are spoiler wary, consider this your warning. And with all of that out of the way, let's dive in. Uh, so I touched on a few things in our intro, uh, but could you tell us a little more about who you are and what you do? Well, I am a comic book enthusiast from uh, at least knee high, just uh, started learning how to read because of comic books, because I'd pick them up and look at the pictures and I'd make up my own dialogue. So I think that's where <laughs> my wanting to be a writer comes in. And uh, that's uh, I just grew up loving comic books, both Marvel, DC. Uh, both have special places in my heart and just I've made my own comic book called Shred City uh, it's uh, basically an urban fantasy my quick elevator pitch is that it's uh, it's lethal weapon meets uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer <laughs> that's how I try to explain it always fun, <laughs> always fun. and uh, I had a really great artist friend that drew that for me if you're wondering like he said he wrote right it's like yeah I write I don't draw unfortunately <laughs> a skill I need to acquire I started watching Young Justice because it was just that kind of pedigree of, you know, from like uh, Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, you're feeling that kind of same energy of just writing caliber. And I was like, I had to get, I had to get into this. <laughs> and you're also, you're one of the co-hosts over on In Quest of Geek, which we've yes. had, we've had uh, Alex and JPG have both went on and they were wonderful. They are the uh, best. So why don't you tell people a little more about uh, what that is? Well, uh, what they do over there. Tavern Team is a nice little introductory into into per, like current stuff that's on on television, video games, mostly video game, uh, mostly movies and television. Like just just recently, we just released a, a Loki episode about the first episode of Loki, and uh, like Tavern Team is just uh, us geeking out over these things, and sometimes Ox looking side eyed at us as we we're like our crazy geekness. But she's she is a kind she's a Jane Goodall that reaches out to our strange primate like geeks that we are. <laughs> oh, it's chaos. It's always so. It's a good. It's a fun dynamic. Yeah. You guys, I've I've listened to several episodes. I've been. I was on in Quest of Geek before you guys uh, split into two into the tavern team and the dungeon dive. Yeah, dungeon something. It's kind of like when uh, when Justice League had to split up in the secret team and. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's very fun. It's fun. So when did you first see Young Justice? Uh, I know you said why you started watching it, but when did you watch it? Uh, on DVD, on Netflix, back when it was the DC Universe, or all the way back in the original run when it was on TV? Uh, I was uh, a little bit of a uh, Johnny Come Lately to it. So I saw it mostly on uh, Netflix when it was on there for a bit. I watched the first two seasons, and then I watched the third season on HBO Max. I think they have on, that's where it's at now. Yes, it was the DC Universe for the year or two where, where that was being a thing, and now it's on HBO yeah. Max. Yes. <laughs> the the adventure of following Young Justice across streaming platforms. So many, yeah, there's so many, like, links, link to this thing to find this thing where it's at over here now. It used to be here, but it's not there anymore. <laughs> as soon as you click on it, like, jeez, we we'll all the time. So what was your history with DC and comics in general before you saw Young Justice? I know you mentioned that you like grew up reading comics, but like what comics did you start with? How'd you get into all that? Well, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big fan of, uh, of Captain Marvel, Shazam. 
I was uh, always always like that that story. Like if it's got mythology in it, I'll love it. Like it's Wonder Woman too, because of all the mytho- I love Greek mythology and stuff, and I love when that gets kind of pulled into this because they're they're so naturally connected to each other, and just the stories about heroes, you know, these or larger than life beings, and uh, so really got to that. Since superheroes are kind of our modern mythology of oh, yeah. a lot of things, yeah, it's crazy how recent it is too. In some ways, to you things like this, the other stuff took thousands and like hundreds and thousands of years. We're at like it was back in 1940, 1930. Yep. It's not that far back. <laughs> like it's like we just barely invented the internet before it. And uh, I loved uh, Green Lantern too. I liked a lot of Green Lantern and Grant Morrison's Justice League run was just fantastic stuff to get into. Well, you'd see that kind of golden age of the. The writing. Yeah. Uh, so actually, the fact that you've brought up Green Lantern is a perfect way for us to segue into what we're <laughs> talking about today. Because when we started talking about what you wanted to discuss on today's episode, you brought up this idea of a connection between Halo and the Green Lanterns. And I'd never really, I don't think, thought that deeply about this idea before uh, you brought it up. So I'm very excited to hear what you have to say on this whole matter. I'm very excited to hear this. So let's just jump into all of that, because uh, in one of our email exchanges, you called Halo the quote unquote de facto Green Lantern of the show. And I'm really curious about what you meant by that, because like, do you do you mean just like her powers or is it like her narrative role or her place in it just on the team or what? I've, I'll, I'll be quiet and listen to you now because I'm sure you have very interesting answers to this. <laughs> well, luckily, uh, I've been, I, I think about this stuff too much for you. For, I do that for you, so for the people. That's my gift is that I think about these fictional characters way too much. And we do that too. I just hadn't, I just hadn't made this connection. It's like, this is what this show is for. That's why I felt Whelmed was my home. It was a nice place to be. <laughs> I love Uh So basically it is come, it comes down to um, the, the connection, not just the green lanterns, but mostly the lantern cores. And in, to elaborate for the audience that doesn't know this part is a uh, pretty recent storyline. Uh, Jeff Johns was this writer who started up a, a green lantern rebirth. And we started really adding to the mythology, like a huge amount. And one of the biggest things he added was other lantern cores. So it wasn't just green, you know, then there's like, because, I mean, I mean, like introduced in the Green Lantern way back when is Sinestro as a yellow power ring. And he was a former Green Lantern. There's all stuff about this. And so they start, he started adding, what if there's more, like simple thing, if you have green, you have yellow, there's a hard entire spectrum. So he kind of did this thing, which I was, I felt kind of stupid that I've never thought of like that. As like a writer, just going like, wait, why didn't why didn't they introduce this? And like, it gets a little crazy, it gets a little Power Rangers at times. Like, not not to besmirch Power Rangers, but that kind of just like, okay, it gets pretty crazy. It's like we got as soon as Green Lantern showed up, there was a Yellow Lantern, and then there was, and then later on it was, and then it was introduced in the the War of the Light, uh, as uh, Red Lanterns who were Red Lanterns, Blue Lanterns, Indigo. Uh, <laughs> Violet, it's the entire which was the color summer. spectrum. The entire color spectrum. If you think, if you're thinking of color, there's a lantern core for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, th- I'm waiting for a chartreuse lantern. We're, we're getting there. I know we can. And uh, so I noticed this Halo. If she at, had a different spectrum of a color color spectrum, that meant a different kind of power set. And that's kind of the energy of. That's kind of the the speed of like the lantern cores. Is that uh, green is a will is the emotional of willpower, which it, I guess is will is it emotion. Yeah, it's so. <laughs> Because I I did a deep dive into this a little bit yeah. back when uh, Green Lantern the animated series was on, and I was oh, trying to figure out fun. the lore on that show when I was when I was a young and uh, and I think the technical quote unquote canon reason for why Green Lanterns are willpower is that like green is the center of the color spectrum, and so it was supposed to be the idea that the Green Lanterns are the most stable, <laughs> so they're just <laughs> emotionally <willpower>. balanced, <laughs> um, which people can draw their own conclusions from what all of that is. But yes, Green Lanterns are the emotion, quote unquote, of willpower and just being strong will. The emotion of keeping your emotions in check. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's adulting. It's the adulting lantern. It's like, no, no, no. We're not goofing around. We're not getting angry. We're not getting all lovey-dovey. We're here. We get stuff done. We're the space cops. We got rules to follow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and so, so this emotional spectrum shows up and Every time Halo would use a color, she, she'd light up a different color, a different kind of power set would show up. And so, like, red was, like, force fields, yellow was energy blasts, and uh, indigo was the coolest one of just a boom tube, just teleportation. 
Like I thought they got like that's that's really powerful. And uh, it just started occurring to me is like these spectrums, like some of the uses that she has are kind of follows the Green Lantern, those Lantern, not the Green Lantern, but the Lantern cores. So like green, green, she used green to use like holograms. That's what Green Lanterns do is make constructs. You know, you just kind of go like, oh, okay. And then red was used for protection. But, you know, if you're angry, I guess. <laughs> these, so this is tinfoil and me kind of stretching it a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to stretch in the gluten of this thing. <laughs> Before we go any further, just for people who don't know, because the lantern court is, there's so many colors and so many things for that. Let's do a quick rundown of what uh, the color and emotion, like, connections are for all of the lanterns so that we can dive into the halo connections first. Okay. Can we do that? I think, yeah, that'll help it organize our brains a little bit. Okay. So <laughs> right. red is. Red is rage. Yes. Rage red is rage. The red lanterns. Uh, then... Orange is. <laughs> Greed and gluttony. <laughs> you kind of go like, oh, okay. Just wanting sure. things and not, not uh, wanting to share. <laughs> uh, yellow uh, is, is. Fear. Fear. Right. And that's Sinestro. That's Sinestro. And the kind of. Sinestro and he named his core, core the Sinestro core. So you go like, okay, fear is also, I think, uh, arrogance. <laughs> really liking yourself a lot. Like, it should like me getting a ring going like, all right, I'm making a Nathan core. It's starting now. You want to be a Nathan? Yeah. A Nathan Lantern? It's very important. There you go. Uh, blue is hope. Is hope. hope. You're, yes. They're good. There's a, whole th- there's a whole thing about them on the Green Lantern, the animated series. Oh, yeah. And they're good. And I they were fun. Yeah. Uh, they're sweet. And. Yeah, indigo is that com- was one I don't know. Compassion, and it is probably the most craziest one because they went basically made it like a cult. <laughs> like it's more like the ring takes you over. Like they they would actually so, like conscript people that were bad people, put the ring on them, and then they would turn into a good, a good person. It was it was pretty crazy. The the ethics of that are pretty questionable. Yeah, but... I go like compassion. <laughs> <laughs> this is stretching. <laughs> Uh, then there's Violet, which yeah. is... The Star uh, Sapphires, love. Yes. They're, Though, their version's kind of more of a very possessive kind of love. Kind of. They're the one that I have the little mini lantern for uh, that I bought because I'm, uh, because I'm trash. Uh, <laughs> you're not <laughs> trash? Right. You that's believe in love. That's nice. You're a Star Sapphire. Me and my whole nonsense of superheroes and love finding out, I was like, there's a, you're telling me there's an entire branch of the lanterns who are just like... We punch monsters with love. I'm like, I love like, this whoa. concept. Are you so this is the love of power of love and the power of friendship? That's where you're really unstoppable. Yep. You can yep. defeat anyone with that. But Sailor again, Moon's also, that. yes. And again, as I've said a couple of times now, my first real introduction to all of the far-reaching lanterns was Green Lantern, the animated series that did That's some a good fun. One. Yeah, but it did some fun things with the Star Sapphires, and because it was for kids, they were a little less iffy i know yeah. in comics they get a little more iffy oh, but i'm just yeah like, it gets a little green light in the animated series once they kind of had a moment of like oh maybe we sh- maybe we shouldn't like kidnap people they're like oh we can we'll just we'll figure it out we'll do Don't worry. <laughs> we'll use magic love portals to send yeah. the red lantern guy to go save his robot girlfriend that's what we're here for and i'm like that's my nonsense that's, that's my brand of nonsense yeah yeah that's when uh, i like i do i do enjoy when like kids shows help kind of just go like how about we take the really jagged edges off of this and just make it a little more? I mean, it's the power of love, right? We're supposed to be good for that. It's yeah. a good thing, not a not a possessive green, thing. And it also, like, if I remember correctly, I remember reading something like the creators were like, the Hope Lanterns should have more powers, so they just gave them more powers than they had in the comics because they were like, they should be able to do more. Yeah, I I was just thinking they should be they should be like the healers. You got yeah. the tanks, you got the Green Lanterns, you got everyone, and then he, they'll be the healers. They're just like, I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better. Because I think in the comics, their main power for the Blue Lanterns is like, them being around makes other lanterns stronger. And it's yeah. like, okay, that's cool. But also you should get to do something. But they're going to get shot at, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> you should have some kind of something. Yeah. Well, some, should, some. Shields, anything. Um, but after the main... Uh, rainbow light spectrum for the lanterns there's also black lanterns and white lanterns yeah. i think do you remember what the what oh, they do because yeah. i have no idea <laughs> black lantern is straight up death it's not an emotional ah, spectrum it's not an emotion <laughs> it's, it's just like no we're just stopping with you how you're feeling about this you're dead like yeah. we bring up we bring zombies it's like jeez and then white is the opposite is life life lantern which i think that old halo i kind of delves into in her uh, her little rainbow 
cue she had that for that for the last uh, last episode or so. Definitely. So now that we have laid some groundwork of for anyone who doesn't know, there are so many things that are there are so many lanterns who are not green and they all have a lot of feelings and they all do so a lot of things. Yeah, um, is, now, <laughs> <a lot. laughs> now I think we can get back a little bit to this idea that Halo is a pseudo green lantern, as you put it. Um, but so let's let's dive into all of that. OK, well, you know. Like a lot of the a lot of Halo's background is that she is part mother box. Like that's pretty big, and like that uh that's that's pretty big deal. And so that gives her a lot of apo- clearly apocalypse and all the fourth world kind of stuff. But like that tapping the spectrum is a power source that a lot of like that was a technology that was figured out by the guardians of the, of the universe, many other ones, and like they're supposed to be the same kind of age as the as the as the new gods and dark side. So yeah. who knows how much of their technology even kind of crosses over. Like that's a thing they can just tap, start tapping into. And if she just taps into it without a power ring, that makes her a wild, a, a, like a, an agent of change there. If you don't need a ring to access that, she can just tap it. Cause she feels like, she, you know, she's feeling sad or angry. It's like, <laughs> Oh, that's a lot. And that's something I think the green Lantern Corps would be going like, did that girl just do all this spectrum? Just suddenly do what all these other guys are doing. Like that's kind of, it's kind of concerning being into control and yeah, uh maybe yeah <laughs> might get some and, people worried uh, yeah they'd be a little concerned about that and uh i think uh i think there's part of part of that story why she's kind of de facto green lantern is i think it's it's a willpower to overcome death like that's <laughs> not a thing to like just kind of scoff at she's like she just takes she takes mortal wounds and just kind of like you know shrugs them off with violet the power of love yes <laughs> He's like, cause she the power loves of love is her healing factor, which is yeah. very is like once because once you brought this up, like I started thinking too much about it. And I was like, oh, wait, that's that's whoa, that's cool. <laughs> Good. Yes, you see it now. <laughs> you see, it. I'll, I'll send you a tinfoil hat in the mail. <laughs> so, yeah, it's like hail is a green land. Hail is a lantern. You didn't know it. <laughs> like, see it. now. And yeah. uh, it's just like a lot of her story is like a lot of stuff. It, a lot of her power is emotion based. Like very clearly emotion based. Like if she's yeah. angry, she can whoop someone pretty good and protect you know protect herself. And if she's scared, you know she you know lashes out in fear a little bit. You can, you can see the kind of crossover. Yeah. For, to remind everyone also, uh, to because we started talking about this and then we're we're gonna go a little bit of everywhere. It's just how things go. But um, so Halo's Halo's powers, as we know, are all she has her different color auras and they do different things. Uh, and we went over what all of the Green Lanterns are. So let's tie into that in the ways in which those kind of are reflected in what Halo's powers are. And this might be a little tinfoil hat sometimes, but that's fine. Uh, and we're going to have fun with it. Um, Heck yeah. So just roll with this audience as we, uh, <laughs> we travel. Red is uh, her force fields, um, which is again as we've said before it's kind of the most stretch of like the rage lanterns and d- defending themselves so, this, but, it'll be fine okay uh so we'll just we'll pretend that one makes it like i don't know you protect yourself because angry i don't a know a defense mechanism is using anger to push people away like a force field <laughs> <laughs> this, okay. i thought about this but um and it's like some of them don't work great because orange yeah. is flight, and you're like, the orange lanterns are their own bag of chaos, yeah. uh, and I feel like none of no powers really relate great to being <laughs> what their gluttony and jealousy. It's like, yeah. what power could you even attach to that that would make she, sense? I would almost say the force field itself actually would have been like keeping you away from my stuff. Me, <laughs> I would have noticed that, or just or she just grabbed people and. And just like held him into it or something like that. You'd be like, oh. hey, like super, super strength for rage yeah. or something like that. Something I hear like you. That. But again, we're making <laughs> but connections it's weird. that like, may or may not mm. need to be there. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yellow is uh, her energy blasts. So which she often uses in fear. I yeah, feel like <gasps> you could make that make sense. Yeah. Fear lashing out. Sure. Uh, green is holograms, which, as we said before, is what the Green Lanterns do. Yeah. It's essentially uh, part of. Hard blue light. is a just a like blinding white light but it's blue uh which i think the first couple of times i was like wait 
isn't that white? And they're like, it's blue. I'm like, it's okay, blue. it's blue. Uh, it's blue <laughs> that it? transitions into being so bright that it looks white. Um, <laughs> but that is kind of used as a way, is it's her like super protection mechanism yeah. and kind of it's used to force away very bad, very dark things. The last a lot. hope, one would could say. Yeah. She <laughs> like like the only the one of the, she only uses it a couple of times and most of them are when she is like beyond fear and into do like being very desperate to do something. So yeah, yeah I can believe last hope as a as a <laughs> metaphorical <laughs> interpretation. Yeah. I hope this works. <laughs> Indigo is boom tubes, and the first time that gets brought up and gets used is when she teleports to where um, Cyborg is when he's gone through that first transformation. And so I think you could absolutely read that as kind of it's it's framed as like an empathic link yeah, to the father box link. that that connects to Cyborg. So being like it's you know the, it's compassion and empathy yeah, and those complicated connection yeah connection right? and and as we said violet uh is her healing factor uh the power of of love can bring her back from the dead uh, and others and right I'm, <laughs> and i'm fine with that i am 100 percent okay with going uh halo's halo's healing factor is just powered by love because <laughs> that feels very true to this character oh yeah oh yeah that, that stays true to her yes love would heal love heals all but yeah, that is kind of the power breakdown. In kind of a larger sense, you were saying the idea of her powers being like willpower and emotion based that I think yeah. the show does a really good job of diving into in a way that feels really real and honest. Like there's yeah. that episode, there's the Halloween episode that's kind of like a very, very creepy, very scary episode in a lot of ways where Halo is feeling very off and isn't sure what she's doing and cyborg gets controlled by the father box and like tries to kill her yeah. and the thing that she realizes when she's she's afraid and she's so distressed by this entire situation is eventually realizing these emotions are complicated and they are difficult but they are part of me and i can't pretend they're not part of me and i am enough exactly the way as that i am yeah which is its own teen hero drama metaphor all in itself, but is also in the larger sense very much how all of the lanterns kind of work. That I think there is some stuff in the all of the lantern comics about the idea that like none of these different factions necessarily are inherently evil. It's just that they're all the <laughs> the ones that are more evil than others are reacting poorly to emotions in a way that they don't need to if that makes any sense yeah like they've got they show that there are like there are good and bad versions of all of these emotions and it's just about how you react to them and use them uh yeah. and i think that's very much at the core of a lot of halo stuff in the third season at least yeah and she gets more powerful she accepts these emotions that are part of her and that's you know not like cutting yourself off from like be angry but don't let yeah, it control yeah, yeah. you you know, but let it fuel you to do something right. Like yeah. those are the things that just like she uses a lot of that. Like this part of this is a weird. You don't have any really context because you can't remember anything. So you're constantly just going like, are these emotions even normal? Like that's like yeah, that's just a teenage thing too. Just going like, are, am I reacting normally? Is this how it's supposed to be? It's like yeah, what, yeah, it is. What do I do with all of this? All these, <laughs> kind of all like, these feels. <laughs> I can't hold heart. all of them. What I do can't I can't hold with all them? this? They're just uh, they're everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. like and Halo yeah. feels everything. <laughs> yes, she does. She's trying her best. So much of that of season three, we will see what she's like in season four, presumably. But season three is a lot of Halo just trying to be like, how do I be a person? How how do? How and do the last guy I liked? He he went and took out his his uncle like murder. Uh, yeah, I thought very highly of him. <laughs> oh yep. my God, can I trust my own? Halo's gonna have an adventure to deal with. She's bag a lot of baggage seasons? for a both immensely four? old pe person and very very young. <laughs> yep, <laughs> she's just like I was a mother box. I'm not supposed to have a, a body and emotions. I'm supposed to be a a spirit in a piece of technology. This wasn't supposed to happen, but I guess I'm gonna run with it. <laughs> Here I am. How do I go back? I don't really want to. I don't even know how to. 
<laughs> no, we're going to adapt. We're going to yeah. figure things out. I am curious now, since we're talking about all of this, do you have uh, a favorite lantern core? Do you have one that you think is the most fun or that you relate to or like any of the above? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big sucker for the blue blue lanterns. I, I'm a big sucker. For, I mean, I don't watch these stories so I can feel bummed out and can't, you know, I like these, I, I read these stories to see, be inspired and hope for something better. Hope, you know, I mean, that's I, I'm a big fan of Superman. He's a big, big guy about, he's all about hope, you know, and yeah. I, I like that. I like that. Like they're, they're the ones that have the least power, but they're the most important because otherwise you're not going to, they're not there. If you don't have that, then you don't take that next step. Like, oh, like the whole, like, the whole thing he was like Jeff Johns is going for is like you can't really have willpower gets stronger when you have hope, you know those yeah. combined. And I like that. I always like that kind of like, and you know <laughs> this goes like the Lord of the Rings too. Just like this light will be your light in the darkest. <laughs> and I like shoot. I'm I'm a sucker for stuff like that. <laughs> power of friendship. Power, power of friend, hope. Yeah. Power yeah, but, of everybody believing in each other, supporting your friends to defeat the Dark Lord. Yeah, it's just like I'm I'm a sucker for that. I'd say that Sam game wise would be a blue a blue lantern all the <laughs> yes. way. Yes, yes. You don't give up. <laughs> so uh, yeah, blue lanterns touch a special chord. They're super sappy. It's very very sappy. I get that, but it's like the emotional spectrum. What are we talk about here? There is always room for that. I want I want more superhero stories that are like hope is what saves us. More of that. Less less grim dark. Yeah. Kill you, kill all of the bad people. Less of that, more way more hope is the power that will save the world. Yeah. It really hope is. Combined with action saves yeah. the world. That's the combination of like, yeah, I like that. Uh, yes. As I said as I said before, I have just because of Green Lantern and the animated series, I do have a special place in my heart for the idea of there is a group of mostly women who defeat monsters with love. Uh, cause that's just fun to me. That's, that's my awesome. brand of comic book nonsense. But I also I have I have mentioned it before on this show, but I always have to bring it up anytime people talk about the chaos that is the lantern core. I like that there is a red lantern who is just a cat. Yes, Dexter. Yes, Dexter, who is not <laughs> Who is not an alien cat, not an anthropomorphic cat, can't, nope. I don't think can talk. I can't remember for sure. I think because I, of the ring, he can talk Because a of bit. the ring, he can talk. Yeah, yeah they, the ring they granted him the power of speech. Yeah. But the idea that this, <laughs> that somebody wrote a very, a very short comic that introduced this character that makes you 100% agree to with the idea that the heart. when... <laughs> That when a Red Lantern came to Earth and said, I need to find the being with the most rage, it found this cat that was full of understandable anger and went, I will give you the power to shoot raise, uh, rage lasers out just of your out of your paws. mouth. <laughs> out of your mouth. He just, no, he just spits rage. It's the whole. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. It's a good yeah. bit of like, because every, we, <laughs> we talk about it here sometimes about like, for all that comic books and superheroes have become very have become very mainstream and have yeah. a wonderful audience and wonderful big budget films, there are little corners of comics that are still supremely weird. Uh, and it's Delightfully. very good. Yeah. Uh so whenever I'm trying to explain to people like the weird intricacies of things <laughs> that exist in uh DC comics <laughs> that <laughs> that you might never have heard of. My favorite one is there is a rage lantern who's just a cat. Just a he cat. wears a ring on his paw and he is full of rage. <laughs> Righteous rage too. Righteous rage. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. It's it's very good. Uh, anyone who has never read that little five thing, five page thing, or it's because it's a pretty short comic. I think oh, it was like part short. of an anthology. Yeah. Uh, go Google it. Go find go find a copy somewhere. Go to your local comic book store and look up the backstory for Techstar. Uh, and he's it will sad. hit you in the. It will make it you will. a little bit sad because uh -huh. he is full of righteous rage. Because everything bad that could have happened to that cat happened to that cat, but. It's good. It's one of those things where, because Red Lanterns are such a, kind of presented as such a one-dimensional yeah. character, are often so much used, I feel like, and presented as just like, here's a bad guy with a bad ring that you can punch because he's too angry. And that gets so boring after a while. Like, I get it. There is a place for that. Sometimes we need that kind of thing in storytelling of, there are bad people 
and we need to stop them. And I get that. But at the same time, I'm like, I would like something interesting. Show me how we, why this person is so full of rage. Give yeah. me an interesting story about this. Like, uh, I really, I know me and a lot of people really enjoyed the way that they explored it on Green Lantern, the animated series, which is my touchstone for Green Lanterns. And I apologize <laughs> that it's the main one that I know. I know there are so many lantern storylines out there and I'm over here in my corner being like, I watched the space opera. Uh, but It was good, though. Yeah, because that show presented our main Red Lantern Razor as someone who had lost everything and responded to that grief by getting stuck in the anger stage of mourning and grieving and just ran with that for so much of his life until eventually having the wonderful development of him becoming a blue lantern at the very end of the series which is amazing of uh, just this idea of like you found something else to live for and you get a new ring yeah. <laughs> go get a new color palette kid well, that's the cool thing about that stuff is they tell stories of just like it's safe to be in your anger because you're used to it. You know, you know how to how you, the devil, you know, you know, that, that, that the old that old chestnut. It's like, yeah, like you're very comfortable to rage because rage is a thing that, you know, and it has very clear, nice one. It's one dimensional. That's what's nice about it is that it's like, oh, this is a nice place. I don't have to think too hard. I can just be angry. I don't have to grow. I just get angrier and deal with all my problems with rage. And then they're like, no, if you start thinking past that, why are you angry? And then it's like, oh, God, this show's turning to ther therapy. <laughs> oh, man, out of nowhere. Sneak attack. My rage is a deflection issue and it stunts my growth, with personal growth. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're like, oh, my God, and these cartoons, man. It's these cartoons. Yeah. Yeah. No, but all of that and the way I love this idea of, of using that whole spectrum of lanterns as a way to kind of explore complex multifaceted emotions instead of just going here's a rainbow of enemies <laughs> yeah. like i think sometimes it gets kind of framed like that of like there's green lanterns so here's a bunch of other colors and they all have their own little weird backstories and yeah. just you know have a giant space fight about it just hit them <laughs> just like everybody everybody make a giant boxing glove in your <laughs> respective color uh and punch each other out of the sky how's it um, can i yeah <laughs> oh. you have a ring that creates anything and you often choose boxing glove it's easy you want to hit them right <laughs> on that front i love uh I have also lo loved and seen Justice League Unlimited and that whole kind of franchise. And I there is an episode of that where a bunch of the Justice League members get turned into kids. And one of the fun details in that is uh, their Green Lantern on that show, uh, Jon Stewart, yeah. when he's stuck as a kid, makes stuff a kid would make with like the lantern ring. Like instead of making like practical things, kind of, yeah. he's like, I built a mech. Uh <laughs> I'm pretty sure he builds a mech with the, with the Green Lantern ring at one point in that episode. And everyone's like, there were probably simpler ways you could have done that. And he's like, but it's cool. But it's cool. Yeah. Oh, my God. Like, like if I'd gotten a ring, it'd be lightsabers and, like, starships. I mean, it wouldn't be, like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit you with a Balrog from Lord of the Rings. Like, I'm just going to do this stuff. One of my I favorite did. lanterns is Kyle Rayner, and he's a, he's an artist. So he's the one that was always doing the most art, artsy stuff with it. I was like, That's, that's that is a very fun, very good idea. And I, we're, we're branching off into all of the lanterns <laughs> instead of just Halo. But like, I know that there is, I've seen, I've seen parts of the story arc. I never read the entire comic, but there was a Green Lantern a couple of years back who was one of the Green Lantern of Earth, who was a young woman who yeah. had severe anxiety. Jessica and how Cruz. they, ex yes, Jessica Cruz. I wasn't, I was trying to remember her name. Yeah. And how I just remember there was uh, a couple of pages of that that kind of went, sort of viral that was about her talking about and them exploring this idea of how despite the fact that she had like severe anxiety and struggled with fear and all of that she was still seen as like you are the person on earth with the most willpower when the ring appeared in front of you that's what that means and these two things are not mutually exclusive being someone who is strong-willed and courageous does not mean you are never afraid and kind of exploring that idea that i think is so interesting when people dive into the idea of like what does it mean that a that a magical force appeared to you and said you're the person with the most insert blank emotion yeah. 
in the vicinity in of this vicinity. thing. Uh, figure out what that means and yeah. how that ah. is such a cool, complicated concept that occasionally just kind of gets brushed over with kind of the lanterns of like, they have the ring, they're going to do the thing now. And I'm like, okay, but can we, can we, let's dive into that and how it's so, it's so interesting and gets brought up just again, that whole idea of all of these complicated emotions and finding that strength in them yeah. that we've been talking about. That's kind of the concept of bravery isn't lack of fear. It's having fear and then still acting, yes. like still doing something. And it can be small victories too. It doesn't have to be like, I saved an entire orphanage. It's like you, you got up and you paid a bill. You made sure your cat was fed. Yes. Like those are sometimes that's a lot for a lot of people and like what kind of willpower it takes. It's not the time. It's a tiny ax too. Yeah. And how it's, it's the whole thing that I feel like Green Lantern storytelling over time has dived into that more and done more with that concept. Cause like even the fact of like the three, the three for the longest time, the three main Green Lanterns on earth that has, this has changed more recently with Kyle Rayner and yeah. uh, Jessica Cruz and everything like that. But like, it was like, you had Hal Jordan, who was just a very traditional kind of hero. He you had Jon Stewart, who is also just a great dude. <laughs> And then you had Guy Gardner, who is a, an awful human being, but the ring kind of went, objectively, you're a very will willpower heavy person. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean good. And that was kind of one of those early things of them kind of exploring the idea of like, willpower is neutral. Yeah. <laughs> It's also impulse control. We're kind of, you don't have a lot of that. <laughs> like, yeah. So you have the willpower to do a thing, which should you do it? It's not, <laughs> Guy Gardner, should, not, not about should you, should more about coulda. Yeah. Like, could, more coulda than shoulda. Like that's Guy Gardner. It's like, eh, <laughs> yeah, he is a, he is a force of chaos, but not necessarily a fun one. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, yeah, no, I'm not a, <laughs> Not the biggest fan of Guy Gardner. <laughs> he, he was designed to be a jerk, and it's yeah, uh, he, he, he does his, he does his part well. But it let them start kind of exploring more of that idea of what does the Green Lantern ring appearing to you actually mean, uh, and what does any of the rings appearing to you actually mean? Yeah, um, it's like a huge thing, and then it's like, do you get overwhelmed by that? Gun? You have the wor- most hope on the planet. Like I do. Then we're in trouble. <laughs> right? Like, I feel like that would be a one that would be well, the I, most stressful uh, to get. It's like, you're the most hopeful person. I, and I'm like, I am? Oh, no. You're also the, you're also the most, you, you must, you induce the most fear. I do? I thought it was okay. <laughs> There's plenty of people you can meet in your life who go like, yeah, they don't, they're not aware of what they're doing to other people. Yeah. And that's, that's the, that's the other thing about it. Like, I think there's both the good and bad version of it. Like, there is the, you could tell a lantern story about someone who's presented with the ring and is like, oh, I never knew I had this kind of strength inside me versus someone who's like, oh, the universe thinks I'm a I'm a terrible human being. Oh, no. <laughs> kind of thing. Oh, man. What's yeah. what's where's my where's my lantern story? That's like the wake up call of someone is like presented with a yellow ring. And like that's when they go, oh, I need to. I need to fix my life and like immediately start working to be like, I want the ring to abandon me. <laughs> what do I just have like, to do? They're constantly like, get, go away. They get a red lantern like ring. And they're just like, I'm not that angry. I've really worked <laughs> on my rage issues. Please go away. It's <sighs> like the, the red lantern ring shows up and you're, they're like, oh, this is, this is my signal that I need to go to therapy. <laughs> this is, this is the wake up call. This is the sign. Like, ah, you have the most love. I do. I kind of I don't go on enough dates is that what kind of love are we talking about can we clarify it seems to be like some I feel like it's a checklist I have to I should get before I get this ring uh but yeah, no like even that like I'd love I'd love a story in set with like the star sapphires of exploring like a more nuanced and complex idea of like no no we mean we mean all love we mean all forms of love it's just like you really like your just, parents <laughs> you love them. oh yeah yeah, like of having uh, Star Sapphires who are like, platonic love counts as love. Family love counts as love. Uh, d- <laughs> Dear DC Comics, give me an ace Star Sapphire who's just like, I just really care about people. <laughs> Everyone. I don't, yeah. <laughs> All of the above. But like, I think we have moved into like a, a world of storytelling that is doing more of that with lanterns over time. And no. all of all of the not 
green and kind of like i feel like red is kind of next in line and how much they get screen time yeah all of the other ones don't get a lot of screen time at dc comics because they're just kind of like they're somewhere out in space and we don't talk about them that much (laughs) until we have an event um oh the orange lanterns we don't talk about them a lot kind of iffy (laughs) what well they are the orange lanterns are kind of the ones where you're like is there a spin on this? Uh, uh, it's just the ring possesses them and they become a construct. That's messed up. Yeah. Yeah. Like, ah. It kind of is. But speaking of all of the lanterns all the way out in space, we we have dipped into a little bit of tinfoil hat theory uh, a <laughs> couple a of times in this. Just just, just a little bit. Just, you, you know, yeah. force fields are rage. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but what do you think the implications of this kind of connection that you've brought up are in terms of like future seasons of Young Justice? Like what would you, what would make you super happy to see them kind of explore and go with this kind of idea of Halo, maybe possibly in your mind, uh, having this connection to the Lantern Corps? I think one of the coolest uh, possible stories you could really start going into is the fact that she was able to tap all into all of them and there's witnesses. <laughs> I mean, a hundred percent Superman saw it. He's not going to lie about it. So it's a hundred percent. So green lantern saw it. So there are implications of that is like, you got, you got, you got, if the lantern or lantern cores already exist, then they'll be going like, Whoa, she can tap into that. Then she's a power battery. Right. And yeah. we should have yeah. her on our side. So there could be a war for trying to own this poor person for Halo. And then if there is no, if there aren't other lantern, lantern cores, it's like the idea of the telephone. As soon as it existed, someone else also invented it almost the same day. It's like one of those crazy science facts that someone invented the same thing because they heard of the concept of it. So if Green Lanterns are running, flying around and then suddenly Halo is like using different color spectrum, someone out there is going to go like, uh, two and two. Wait, maybe she's, I can get, maybe I can access this thing. And so she could become this kind of an arms race. Like they were using metahumans as the arm race. It was an arms race kind of idea. She's the next one. Like she can literally tap into the emotional spectrum of people. Holy crap. Like imagine that level of power of just going like, I can just teleport because I feel like connected to someone. <laughs> like, holy crap. Like I find anyone and just take them out if I feel connected to them. Like there's a lot of implications and I think it'd be a really cool one to go tapping into. If she could tap all the spectrums, then we're now, we could start tapping into the white and the black lanterns. So we got life and death start becomes a big thing. One thing is maybe a, maybe like a, a recruitment drive for the young justice themselves. Like you can see any aspect who would be really tempted by a certain ring or a certain you know lantern. Like I'm pretty sure Nightwing would probably get maybe the blue ring. Maybe he's pretty hopeful. He's hope. Or he's Nightwing's, gonna go like no Nightwing's, fear. Nightwing's superpower is is having friends and knowing people. Oh, and- love. He should be a, a star sapphire then. <laughs> Oh, just because I I could definitely see hope for Nightwing. He's kind of yeah. that. He's good leader most of the time. There was some iffy stuff in the later seasons with this, but he's trying. Uh, <laughs> that's that's should be emotional spectrum. I'm trying lanterns. <laughs> <laughs> where do you fall on the best, green lantern please. spectrum? <laughs> trying my best. Uh, where does that go? Which color is that? Hmm, gray. Are <laughs> 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 you sure the color spectrum is? But yeah, no, I think all of any and all of that could be interesting, especially because like it seems like season four is going to maybe involve some of like the Legion of Superheroes stuff, which is time traveling and also far out in space. I And I'm only saying that I have we have gotten no trailer and no information about season four. Just the fact that season three ended with the this is the Legion of Superheroes ring on a random waitress's hand. Uh, yeah, I was like, huh? My, my wonderful co-host Rich f- freaking out about that to the <laughs> the hardest also, possible a degree. ring. A, ri- a ring, Whoa. too. Ooh, We're, it's all coming tenfold. together. It's coming together. <laughs> Put another pin on the conspiracy theory board. Get, get some yarn. more string. Freaking We're going to make it work. We're going to make it work. Brew that coffee. When you go caffeine. <laughs> But like if things go to more like we're traveling to the to the far future or we're traveling far out into space, maybe we could end up with some more of those lanterns or something like that at some point. Yeah. I know that there are some younger lantern characters. I don't know any of them off the top of my head. Uh, but like are there any like younger teen 
teen lanterns of any variety that you think might be like a cool fit for the show? Well, if we're doing some time travel, there's one from the Batman Beyond universe. That's a kid who's basically like a 12 year old like kid with a Green Lantern ring. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. They're gonna do that. And if we're going Legion, Legion of the Superheroes, there's actually just introduced pretty recently in a run is a Gold Lantern. It's oh, supposed to be like a whole different, a whole different lantern. So, what are their powers? What are their emotions? Like it's like from what I'm seeing, it's like it's almost like unlimited <laughs> so, so they might be og lantern like o, op lantern it's like way too powerful just th- them and halo team up and they're just like we're all the emotions and all of the colors just in two different ways heck it might be even a halo lantern he's just like we followed your lantern she's like what i did a what <laughs> yeah you made a lantern oh my god how would it actually be so cool since so much of what I have gathered about the Legion of Superheroes from Rich loving it t- yeah. so much uh, is the idea that like the Legion of Superheroes were originally supposed to be inspired by Superman. Like they are yeah. kids a thousand years in the future who were like, well, we heard about Superman and just thought we could we could do that. So we made <laughs> we made a team. And a lot of people have been theorizing of like the idea of the Young Justice's legions of Legion of Superheroes might have been inspired by Superboy stepping forward instead to kind of tie it more into our main cast or like the team in general. So like, if that is true, if that gets expanded upon, it would be really cool to see people who are like, "Well, we heard about Halo, <laughs> so she we just thought, really cool. could could we do that?" <laughs> oh, Halo, the greatest superhero in, in the uni- of the universe, right? Yeah, you know, like, what? I'm that, what? <laughs> Okay, that person who's just, you know, a mother box given human form with t- eight different powers and one of them is just all of the eight powers at once. Uh, yeah, the greatest hero of all time. Yeah, we fall. We, we expect him. Superman's cool, too. We like him, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but Batman, God. he's the best. <laughs> Thousand years in the future. And they're like, yes, Batman. Yeah, oh, he's the best. The, the dude with some gadgets who's protecting this one city. From some very weird criminals, greatest superhero of all time. Everyone knows it. It's like we call them the the Edge Lord uh, League of Heroes. No, there. no, <laughs> no, 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 Batman. <laughs> no, I, yeah, no. Actually, that's uh, a bad idea. You're right. I apologize on uh, that. Were my opinions for a moment there that not reflected by Whelmed. Please don't, please don't hate them. No, no. Send all your is, anger at me. <laughs> this is mostly a joke based on the fact that I. Uh, <laughs> I firmly believe there are wonderful and amazing ways to write Batman and that the best ways to write Batman have nothing to do with making him the most dark and broody killing machine possible. I'm like, yeah. you know what's an interesting Batman? The man who lost his whole family and decided to adopt a city to fix it. Like, yeah. that's an interesting take on Batman. Please give me more of Bat Dad. Uh, that's Bat-dad. what I would like. Um, yeah, that'd be great. The one that Young Justice has leaned into a little bit of just being like, after so many comics being like, yes, we know Batman has had multiple preteen sidekicks, but he, he'd he be awful at being a father. Young Justice is like, no, Batman's had multiple preteen sidekicks. Why would he be bad at being a dad? <laughs> Wait, no, that's He's not a good so take. <laughs> Young Justice is like, Batman willingly adopted this child. He cares about him what's what's hard to what's hard to understand about that um yeah it's always this people stance on like batman i'm just like is he putting a kid in danger or is he making a kid prepared for a world that killed his parents like you gotta want is he parenting like, the best he can <laughs> i like young justice's interpretation of all of that um <laughs> Because I know that we're supposed to be talking about Green Lanterns here, but the Young Justice version of that of someone asking, like, you adopted, you you inducted Robin into crime fighting at nine years old, Wonder Woman says to him, you just want him to be you. And his response being, I wanted him not to be me. I made sure that he found a way to get actual justice for the man who killed his parents. You know, the thing I never got to do that has resulted in me being... Yes. <laughs> he just gestures himself. So, <laughs> so I was trying to, you know, help. And I did. I helped like, the yeah, best no, way that's I a- could. Yeah. And helped in the way person. that Gotham can. It helped <laughs> in the nice way that Gotham a- gets. <laughs> helped in the way that like superhero comic book logic can. Uh in a world where people wear capes and fight crime, this 
is a is a good path. Uh, but this is the world where no one goes to therapy to get costumes instead and fight crime. That's except the world in Young in. Justice, having multiple superhero therapists. This is <laughs> this is pretty amazing. This is Emily just pointing out. I'm like, I just like things Young Justice does. I wonder why I have a podcast about it. <laughs> I wonder. But yes, all of that. Speaking of superhero therapists, you know, Green Lanterns full of emotions. All of the lanterns full of emotions. All it's all coming together. It all makes sense now. <laughs> That's how okay. we got here. Definitely not at all, all right, a right. tangent. No, what? The tangent is an unplanned route that was always planned because we GPSed it. Which is a higher viewpoint we're looking at. It. Absolutely. We know exactly what we're doing. So now that we have covered all of the lanterns across every color, spectrum, emotion, possible corner of space and time, uh, <laughs> thank you so much for spending some time with us here in the Watchtower, Nathan. Where can people find you here on Earth Prime? Well, you can find me on uh, Twitter, the, at Nate the Greater. Uh, not the greatest, but I'm working my way up. <laughs> and uh, you can catch, uh, as I said earlier, you can catch me on Tavern Team with uh, Alex and Cole. We are, uh, I think the next steps we'll be doing will be about uh, Luca. So keep, uh, keep an ear out for that. By the time this comes out, people, you will probably have even more episodes. But at the time we're recording this, oh, Luca that's right, timestamp. <laughs> this is how people can figure out when these are happening. This is timey wimey um, stuff, man. Wibbly wobbly. Like, what, what time wild. am I talking? By the time by you the hear time, my voice, I've already <laughs> said, said a whole bunch of other things. <laughs> by the time this comes out, you guys will have an episode about something that doesn't exist at the time we're recording, probably. Oh. Well, you just hurt, you just, just hurt my brain. Just the ma the magic of editing. <laughs> so thank you to everyone for spending some time with us here today. If you'd like to join us in discussing this incredible series and all of its many lanterns, you can find us on Twitter at the YJ Files, on Facebook at Crashing the Mode, on Tumblr at the yjfiles.tumblr.com, and on our website crashingthemode.com. You can also find us on YouTube, Stitcher, and iHeartRadio. And if that somehow isn't enough for you, you can email us at whelmedpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to support our show, please consider sharing it with a friend and joining our chats on social media. You can also help support the show by giving us a five-star review and or rating on Apple Podcasts or your podcatcher of choice. The ratings, comments, and subscriptions help others find the show. If you do leave us a review, please let us know at our email address or on social media, especially if you live outside the U.S., since we have to look a little harder to find those ones and it's... It's just very, very helpful if you tell us they're there. <laughs> if you are able to support us monetarily, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash crashing the mode. Even $1 a month can help us bring you even more awesome discussion sessions, interviews, reviews, and more. And as always, stay whelmed, everyone. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Well